So now we're into the question and answers. Anybody who participated in my community post, thank you very much. Uh, there were some lovely comments there uh, that weren't questions at all. Uh, there was an immense amount of goodwill and curiosity. Uh, anybody who follows my community post, uh, I find it a very cathartic process to explore thoughts, things that I probably couldn't express um, orally, such as this, or certainly couldn't express in one of our day-to-day -day films, um, just documenting our work. But we'll fire into it. Everybody that put their name and where they're from, I'm going to answer your questions. And the first one's from Kimberly from Australia. Kimberly wants to know, where do we decide to live near the front lines? Does the army have a barracks or a large place for soldiers to live? Okay, so there's zero line. Uh, that's the flot, forward line of troops. Uh, that's us and the Russians. And then from the rear, there'd be first line, possibly second line. Um, there could even be a third line, like Solodar, for example. It, it all depends on the terrain. That, that dictates everything in the war uh, before assets. And uh, we spread out, okay? When people rotate out into the rear, uh, could be five kilometers back, 10 kilometers, 20, all, all the way to Kiev. Um, soldiers spread out, okay? We don't concentrate because that would increase your, your odds of getting hit uh, by S-300s, uh, various missiles, aviation, artillery or drone strikes, okay? Uh, the more in a house, the more dangerous it is. Um, Deborah from Stuttgart wanted to know about Nika and her current work. Nika is currently, she's now a rota medic. Okay, so, so what a rota medic would di difference uh, from hospitalieri, which handles evacuations at different stages. Um, hospitalieri battalion generally won't work beyond the 300 point. Uh, the casualty collection from armored vehicles, maybe I'd say maximum two kilometers to the front. Uh, it used to be different. Uh, but that has changed from uh, last spring, okay? Um, but whereas Nika will stay there constantly, uh, she's responsible for her men in her rota, which is like the equivalent of a company size, for all their general health uh, in charge of evacuations, life-saving procedures. It could be as simple as a cold or frostbite, which can be very serious. Um, that is her job. She's essentially married uh, to a rota, okay? Hanukkah from the Netherlands asked about some hospitalers who have moved to work directly in the army, like Nika. Can you describe the difference between the two and would you consider signing a contract with the army? Uh, Hospitalieri is a volunteer on paid battalion since 2014 that will attach to various battalions, brigades, even at the company level. And it's a, it's a, con it's a written contract from a certain period of time to a certain period of time and a team to be relieved. So as these people are on paid, they could be doctors. Uh, one, Losh I work with, he works full time as a paid um, paid worker for Pratula, some of you may have heard of, and he'll do rotations when he can. Some people do it full time, like Dan Rebar, say for example. Uh, one of our, our more well-known uh, members, uh, Cheka, for example, she, she, would be, um, she would be virtually full time, non-stop, such as myself. OK, um, the reason a lot of people sign contracts is financial. OK, they can't connect. Uh, they can't collect money, so they don't have um, they don't have the ability to sustain themselves. They don't have the ability to sustain their family. But I would say probably 80 percent of hospital battalion that uh, sign their contract uh, to the armed forces of Ukraine, they will do it with a brigade that they've worked with. And they've worked with several times. So in medical terms, they like the doctors, the brigade, the brigade likes them. So in a way, it's 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 the best way to get in bed. OK, would I consider signing a contract myself uh, fully intend to? And that would either be Tres Tormova or it would be Moshka Pahota. So that's your third assault brigade or uh, the Marines. Um, I've, I've had very good experiences there. I've had very good work there. Um, and they're a bit more progressive. But everything depends on commander. Commander, comm it's no different than me, okay, uh, as a foreigner. The only difference is I can bring in capital. So I'm an a I'm, I have that asset as well. 
um, so in a sense it kind of makes us babied a lot of a lot of the foreigners um, it's true Rob from South Carolina wanted to know uh, if I could start from the beginning uh, with Hospitalieri would I do would I do anything differently and why um, I think there's nothing I could do differently I would I would put credit to you uh, as supporters especially financial supporters I would put credit to to every volunteer to to every soldier officer that has been there and it's it's been one step after another I would not choose another way uh, Jana Zinkovic our commanding officer um, Forbes magazine I believe put her in the top 100 most influential women last year and I often wondered in our battalion why is it that we had level 4 ceramic plates I had my own, my own helmet. Why did we have the best of equipment when guys in 93 Brigade who die every day? Um, I don't think we've lost 10 people in this war, okay? We've had a fair a fair few wounded, but, um, you know, uh, other brigade, brigades lose like 10 a day, 20 a day. Um, that's a testament to Yana Zinkovich that she takes care of her own and that there would be zero corruption with her. We're wearing it, right? So... No, I, w I wouldn't have done that different. Justin from Sydney, Australia. Uh, exceptional work. Yeah. Uh, question. I was wondering, how is it you're able to fly around the world as you have been? Does Hospitalers, AFU, take issues with your leaving your position as a valued medic at the front? I don't know how valued of a medic I am. Um, my skills, thanks to everyone else, have, have greatly increased. I had no skills in the beginning of the war, but the willingness to learn. And I have much more to learn. How is it that I've done all these? Well, first of all, it takes money. Um, a third of that would have been uh, from air miles. Somebody suggested um, followers, supporters like yourself have given me air miles. My auntie Jennifer, uh, when I came home to visit her, she she wanted wanted to pay that, and the rest would be outright from donations. I've I've until as of until December first. Um, my income was solely uh, from your donations and I've tried to live very frugally um, but considering the month of the month of July was our highest month of donations ever um, and it's risen ever since there was a dip in August um, I would say that tour paid off so it was all paid for by you uh, there is other tour, another tour coming up imminently uh, that's paid for by the British Foreign Office and uh, the Ukrainian Foreign Ministry. I'll talk about that another time. Mark from Devon, what's the best and worst day? Um, I'd say probably the best day ever. Um, it'd have to be a Dimitri day. It'd have to be a Dimitri day. I couldn't think of the one. Um, Maybe the worst day ever, um, getting blown up, that sucked. Um, yeah, I was pretty scared shitless that day, but I went and did my job. But I spun that into gold, and that's why you're watching my channel now, <laughs> right? Never let a good disaster go to waste. Lorna from Scotland. What are the coping mechanisms you have to deal with commanders whose mindset is still very Soviet? Um, that's half the army. That's half the army. And... Um, I just try to accept what I cannot change and try to work with it. Uh, try to find people that uh, that I can work with, you know. A great privilege as a foreigner. Dave, flight medic from US. From injury pattern perspective of ballistic plates not adequate due to large volume of artillery, etc. Is older Kevlar vest with side platings on top what is really needed, especially in a more static fight? Uh, head injuries, abdominal injuries. Um, yeah, okay, so a shell, a mortar, it hits down to the ground, and then it goes in a projection like this. Um, probably more top if you were sitting in a trench. Uh, some of the assault guys do invest in dick protectors. Okay, drivers, it'd be good to have a soft Kevlar, a hard Kevlar. Uh, then you're sacrificing movement. Overheating is a big thing in the summer. Um, I can't answer your question. You know, there's a million different fragmentations. You're probably not going to save an arm. Um there's going to be pluses and minuses to everything. Um, 
a lot of time with internal complications i've seen i've seen things rip through the soft kevlar um it, it's gonna happen rs from stockholm what do you wish most ukrainians understood about the west what do you see they lack and understand and still need time to understand communication uh communication is a big thing um communication just like a business if you're gonna have a delay if you failed me in some way call me up let me know don't make me call you motherfucker uh whether i paid you money for something uh delivery um i won't be upset but i'm going to be upset if you don't talk to me um that's that's my biggest issue with ukrainian society um they're not very good communicators in general uh you have to learn to work their ways but it would go a lot faster if they would just ask all the people that I support through you. Uh, we have good relationships and, and it's been able to carry on. Um, when they need something, they ask. Okay. Will from Ottawa, kit breakdown, what you carried to the front and how you carried it. Average loadout, grenades. Um, I usually rocked with an F1. Okay. And I had an RGN and uh, those are grenades and... Uh, no real need for one just like say for example when nika and i worked together let's not be dramatic but we both had an agreement she would not be raped i would not see it it would be very unceremonious okay uh so guns yeah i've only ever fired twice okay i've got five mags okay standard issue is four anyways you don't you, you, i'm going to take it you don't care about the medical equipment you just want to know about guns um marge from canada always curious why have you moved around so much? Canada, UK, Sweden, Argentina, New Zealand, South Africa, Australia as well. Because uh, it was an opportunity. M my childhood, my biggest escapism growing up, I had a map of the world. I had a globe. I would look at it. I had those coffee table atlases. Uh, my aunt Jennifer, she left home, her hometown at a young age, moved to Toronto. She moved to northern Quebec to learn to speak French. She moved to Burkina Faso uh, for 18 months, uh, which they speak French. So why she learned it uh, with a group called Crossroads International, uh, which is, I think, lightly religious. But you didn't have the Internet back then. Jennifer showed me these things were possible where I come from a one horse town. OK, uh, nobody has ever been anywhere. Very few people. Um, I say that respectfully, but a, a resort in Mexico does not count. Um, you you know it's she showed me what was possible but i i didn't want to stay where i came from there was nothing there for me uh i had an opportunity through uh my work life and in exhibitions and events that people know each other and i was able to work the circuit of these events uh for no less a year, than a year in most of these countries to work a different city every week to meet people of that lifestyle and that's what I did up until Corona. I, I had a business in that industry uh, of my own uh, for eight years in the UK. So I, I, I love that. I like to see things. And uh, I'm not jaded, but uh, I, I don't get excited to travel anymore. It's just what we do. I'm off to Southampton on a course tomorrow. Barry from BC. Love to hear about when you first met Masa. Uh, so Masa comes from Latvia. Masa, come there. Come. Oh, she's in her mood. Um, we adopted her through a rescue agency called Take Me Home. You can find them on Facebook. They get dogs from, they did at least, Russia, Estonia, Latvia, Eastern Europe. And uh, we adopted Masa. She was one year old. Uh, she did suffer some abuse. I don't know the history of it. And um, I was just, uh, I just had a surgery my ac joint so I, I was out of work for about four months and uh, i spent that time with masa and studying uh, at the time to improve my prospects in sweden and uh, I, I bonded with her uh, right away the first day she did big shit and piss in the house but she never did again um, carrie from ontario just sending you good wishes um, and masa is so cute that's not a question but that's a masa compliment so that's why that got in there and um Rachel from Vestabotten here in, in Svaria, uh, she says, in your experience, do the wounded have, they had years of military training to cope with their pain and fear better than those who were civilians? Okay. Um, 
I'm going to answer that with another story. Uh, when I came home in the summer to fight with Mikrofonsverke and I served the presentations, one was with Jota Bori, uh, with the commune. Okay, the, so that's the, the Gothenburg Council. And uh, there's aspects of the Hembarnet, the Home Guard, uh, the fire service, every service, even sc the school principals. And um, I, they do this every two years in Sweden, all the councils, preparation for natural disaster and war. Okay, and they see where they're at. And uh, I told them something that uh, I believe to be true from my experience and not a lot of people liked it. Uh, but there's a woman who's in charge of the fire brigade for, for Jotobori commune, and she, she's quite hot. Um, anyway, um, she seemed really on board, like she seemed to click. And what I said to her is, um, regardless of your position, uh, if it ever comes to Sweden, if the shells start flying, half of you will run. You know, whether you're the mayor, the police chief, uh, whatever level or service, you will grab your family and you will run. And they were like, of course I wouldn't. Yeah, you will. Um, but the other half will stay and the other half will fight. Um, so you might find yourself working, uh, use an example, a hell's angel might be working with the fire brigade or uh, a carpenter with a van will come and help with this and that with the ambulance service, the police service. And please, Sweden, in your OCD-ness, I'm gonna, I didn't say that. I hope you're gonna have the humility to be okay with what's happening at the time. Uh, Western trained soldiers, uh, I, I don't know about fully Western trained brigades, uh, but I will tell you in the meat brigades, guys who've had Western training, um, they're no better. Um, quite often, as we've seen in Solodar, when people came to help, um, when we was doing the civilian evacuations, they just sat in Blahadatne. They're like, that's a 155, that's a 152, that's an 81. I was like, yeah, are, are you just gonna tell us what it is or are you gonna come and work? Um, they were a bit too concerned with their own life. Um, so I, I don't know about training, long years. Uh, sadly enough, a lot of the guys from 2014 who've been around are most experienced soldiers, most of them are gone. Um, and I do know in Ukraine, uh, some of them have been discharged who probably still could fight because I think they want to keep them alive. Some of those guys, uh, humans, a human Brian, um, asked me, uh, he's from Chicago. Uh, I always see him in the comments, ask about my Crohn's disease and how it's difficult to deal with in Ukraine. Um, you eat what you can get. Okay, and, and sometimes like I'll, I'll fall to comfort foods and uh, that plays up. I'm experimenting with gluten-free here in Sweden. Um, and uh, I must say, uh, I, I thought it was the dairy. Uh, the gluten-free is amazing. Um, we'll leave it at that. We'll see how that goes. But I do cheat. Like if I'm out with someone, I'm not, no, I'm gluten-free. But I definitely reduce my gluten. Okay. Alex from Berlin. He thinks his money well invested for a year and a half from me and he donates to Harley. Thank you very much. Question, do you know a reliable German organization from Berlin besides International Aid Group? I do not. I don't know any groups. Um, uh, when I dealt with Enrico and Chris and the others, it was just so good. I never needed to look further. But if I needed stuff, for, we don't communicate as much now. But if I needed things from Germany, it could happen just as easily. Um, and how do you meet Ukrainian male refugees that would normally be drafted that can help at the front? Uh, there's a discussion of ethics about what to do with them. Um, we say, soldat. Why are you not a soldier? Um, and that's a social rift inside Ukraine as well. And we could talk about that another day, but I don't feel the most qualified to talk about that. Uh, this is only what my friends tell me, people that I know and trust. And um, a real soldier, his muscle mass is depleted. Uh, he's carrying a gut now from poor diet. Um, the pretty boys, the muscle boys, they're in Kiev. Anyway, Jacob from America. Okay, what do I think of Ukrainian leadership? Uh, Zelensky, Zeluzhny. I think they're humans. Uh, I adored, idolized Winston Churchill. Read many books on him. But seeing uh, how Zelensky has succeeded and failed, um, I'm now revising, like, I shouldn't idolize Churchill so much. He's a human being. Um, 
it kind of makes me think I shouldn't glorify the past so much because I'm I'm seeing historical events, I'm participating in them. Um, Zaluzhny is extremely popular. Uh, most of the guys like him. I remember when he came to power, uh, Igor Petrovich, um, who's chief medical commander of uh, First Tank Brigade, uh, he was so proud of the fact uh, that this was an officer, the first officer in command of the armed forces of Ukraine that had never served in the Soviet army. You know, so like, um, People really like him. As far as Zelensky goes, uh, he's still very popular amongst people. You know, who, who else could have done it? Uh, but there's many, there's a much rot in Ukraine. And whether he knows about it or not, he must answer for it. Um, Sean uh, Villarreal, I, I appreciate the transparency. I, I put my life on too much. From San Antonio, I've been tracking you and others' progress for a while. Uh, are combat units attached to medical units to provide screening for us to keep the medics and wounded uh, protected in uh, in case of a breakthrough? Wondering what the process is like. I plan on joining up. Okay, okay. Um, if you want to join the army, like anybody who asks me they want to help now, regardless if it's humanitarian, I tell them to go to Ternopil. Google a unit that you want to join, and about 80% of them are recruited in Ternopil. Okay, there'll be someone that speaks English, you want to join Third Assault, you want to join the Marines, you want to join the Territorials, it's all done there. Um, uh, medics are armed, most of them, uh, but guns don't help against shells, and that's, sometimes a gun's in the way, okay. Um, is there a need for non-combat workers in Ukraine, right? Okay, uh, Andy from Ohio, I don't know, do you know what I mean? Like, uh, you just have to go. Just go and take a chance, you know, talk to someone online. Uh, not to be rude, don't talk to me uh, because I don't get, like people say to me like, oh, you get so many messages. I, I get about five or six a day, but I can't answer them because if I don't know, I don't reply. Um, I don't even reply. Uh, if I can point them in the right direction, I'll, I'll often say to Um How do you remain sober uh, from drinking? Okay, no name on that one. So if there's no name or where you're from, I, I won't oblige you, um, but I do. Tess from Oz, what do you think drives you and others like you to do what you do in a conflict zone? Uh, your opinion on how the war is going and what further support is needed? Well, Tess, uh, what drives me, I have a hole in my soul and through 12 years of 12-step uh, recovery, I've, I've gone through the steps twice. See, it's it's not the time in, it's the quality of time through step work. And uh, through three different periods of my life, I've done about four years of therapy uh, to address a lot of issues. So I've been pretty good at uh, in introspection. Some days I can be stubborn for a couple of days, but I, I usually surrender to the facts. Um, I have a hole in my soul. And what I found, it was filled by good deeds, uh, that it made me feel equal not better than or worse than other people. And I found great purpose in that. Um, I won't name names, uh, but other people that would have big social media followings, I assume you're talking about foreigners, because uh, that's what you have access to in the English language. Um, they all have holes in their soul too. Um, they may come from, you know, their parents have died, uh, rescuer syndromes, um, past bad relationships, um, like I, if someone says, oh, I'm just here to help. Yeah, I'm, I'm keeping my eyes on you, mate. Um, but um, I've often identified that with people by uh, revealing vulnerabilities of my own, you know, when I get to know them for a couple of days. And that's how I qualify. Do I want to invest more time in you? Uh, if you'll be honest with me and I can understand your motivations. Um, the only person... Uh, I will say this right now because I don't think he would mind. Um, Harley, for example, I haven't identified his hole in the soul. Um, maybe he has one, maybe he doesn't. But he's the most sensible person, uh, foreigner that I deal with who comes to the front, uh, near to the front line and does his work. Um, as a foreigner, he's the only one who makes my life easier. I'm not denigrating anyone, it's the nature. Brandon, can you help? Brandon, can you help with this? Brandon, so-and-so needs a truck. They have more followers and money than me, but anyway, 
um, that guy really makes my life easier. I haven't identified the hole in his soul. So that's what it is. What support does Ukraine need? Shells. We need lots and lots of shells. You know, there's so if we had miraculously had like 100,000 shells right now, I'm not saying we'd fire them all off. But I think in the week, in a week, we could kill 10 to 20,000 Russians with confirmed positions that we don't shoot at right now. Jake Bro once said in his videos, he's pretty accurate, like in the areas I've worked. I'm like, yeah, that's true. There's one time I called him out. I didn't call him out, but I, I was like, ah, you're wrong. Oleshki Sands on the left bank. He's like, it's empty. It wasn't. It was crawling with Peter. Um, we could take them all out if we had the ammo. Um, yeah. They're getting, they're getting quite comfortable and complacent too in those positions. And I'm just a medic. I'm, I'm not on the drone teams. But I know and I've seen it. Uh, what sort of things make the job easier for you? Maris uh, from USA. My friends. Uh, my friends. Uh, just getting little victories, little satisfactions. Um, it's very self-serving in a sense. Like when you guys donate money to me. But like when somebody needs something. It's like... Rishala, Rishala. I started that nickname, but someone explained the word. And some people called me Rishala, like Pasha. If you know Pasha um, uh, from the Sue Strumming video, he, he, a winged hussars, he's like, oh, Rishala, help me with this. You know, like I, like, I like being able to help people. And when I fulfill, that's my, um, that's, that's better than adrenaline to me. Adrenaline's good, but that's better. Um, Wendy from Calgary, if you could give 10 year old Brandon some advice, what would you tell him? Uh, just do it. Just do it. Scariest thing in my life was always, uh, the prison of self in my head. Uh, what would people think? What if they said no and rejected me? You know, I used to walk Katie O'Shea to her locker every day in school. I had the biggest crush on her, <sighs> you know. Uh, so many times I was like, will you be my girlfriend? Will you, uh, you know, and I froze every time. Um, I've gotten so many no's in my life now and I'm still here. You know what I mean? It, it's scary. It's like jumping into a cold pool at first. It's like that cold shower shit. But um, I just wish there's so many more things, especially when I was younger. I just did, you know, but I wouldn't be here now, you know, because it's like the butterfly effect. Um Hey, Brandon, Irene from Ontario. What language has been harder for you to learn, Swedish or Ukrainian? So, I live in Stockholm. Sweden has the second highest rate of English uh, of a non-native English-speaking country, second to the Philippines, oddly enough. Didn't know that. Um, Swedish, I was a fluent reader, and I still am, um, in about a year. But to speak to people, nobody will speak to you in Stockholm. Stockholm's a cold, hard city. Uh, and uh, that really hurt emotionally moving here. Um, it took me about 14, 15 months at Mosa. Uh, and then I passed a Svensk Anstellnings interview, a Swedish job interview. And um, yeah, it got better and better and better and better. Now... I can have direct conversations if we have um, if we have the context, but when they're talking amongst each other, it's been two years. I, it's too fast for me. Um, you know, I, I can still watch TV with the undertext. Um, uh, Ukrainian, Ukrainian and Russian, I know about maybe like two hundred words, and a lot of them have no other option. So that's why the Duolingo has really helped me because I really have to be creative because there's no option in Sweden. They just shut you down and they switch to English. Unless you go outside of Stockholm, like if you go to Yevle, Uppsala, and your Swedish is good enough, they'll help you with the word in English, but they'll switch to Swedish because they, they appreciate it because they're Swede Swedes, uh, not to be racist. But um, Jesse from UK, uh, do you think there's any way to save more limbs uh, from not enough trained medics on the zero line? Uh, so there's a lot of talk right now. It's gone full pendulum on the tourniquets. There's been many amputations um, due to inappropriate tourniquet use or tourniquet left for too long for evacuation where a tourniquet might not have been necessary. And I've known about this for a long time, but it's, it's really just starting to come out in social media circles, in English anyway, in the medical ones. 
in the Ukrainian ones, they've been talking about it for six months. And the biggest thing would be to teach tourniquet conversion. I'm not opposed to using tourniquets immediately because when in doubt and who's got the time, but uh, I'm not trained or qualified in tourniquet conversion. I think all medics should be. And um, I think more hemodialysis. Okay, so that's to clean the blood. So if you were to release a tourniquet, like Third Assault has a hemodialysis machine because they're so progressive and the doctors are like, well, if we don't know how to use it, we want to learn. Um, other people have knocked it back. And I think that's that's immoral. Like those doctors have indirectly killed people. Um, if you could clean the blood as it goes back in, so it, it's not like, you know, sepsis shooting into the heart and then you have cardiac infarction, um, that would be a big factor. So if all medics were trained on tourniquet conversion, um to remove tourniquets um like i can do it i watch doctors do it in stabilization all the time but that's not my call uh, i would do that if i had to do that um and i don't have to worry about litigation in ukraine because i did my best but i should be trained and qualified on that every medic should and hemodialysis should be brought in as much as we can get um because life over limb but what is the quality of life you know double amputation above the knee come on um, I, I don't have to answer those questions. Uh, no, I mean, I, I, I'm not the person to answer those, but, and I'm glad I'm not. Carol Babushka in California, I'm concerned about you. How's your health? So again, we're off the gluten for the most part. Uh, I've been, I'm not running right now. Uh, so I did all the runs. Um, and then I, I had to back out of one because I damaged my hip flexor. I'm swimming every day and I'm up to about a kilometer. And then I do this stuff with resistance bands, working on my core, leg lifts, um, and I'm just trying to build myself up. And then we had a melt here in Stockholm, so it all turned to ice again, you know, you know when it freezes again. I'll start running again next week, and I'm going to try some 10k challenges, but more consistent, because I think I want to do it for fundraising, social media keeps me accountable, but I, I think you guys will back me. But I, I just, I want to earn the money, you know, for for the things that we've been doing. Like Nika's truck is on the way to Ukraine with the trailer I bought um, on Tuesday, you know, like, so that will happen now. So I, I just want to keep doing that stuff. Uh, my fitness is better. Um, mental and physical health, it works together. It's going okay. It's going okay. Okay. Um, Nigel from North Carolina uh, it's a it's a private joke. Any chance of another Mossa patch to raise funds? Okay, so there was a Canadian volunteer that helped with things online. There was all kinds of Mossa merchandise, and we sold about fifteen thousand dollars in the first war, uh, first year of the war. And uh, he's since been in Ukraine, but there's talks about him going back to Canada. Uh, I would try to get that going again. Now, now that money never came to me. Uh, that went to other volunteers that I handpicked. There's a theme with that in me about supporting other people. Um, I'm not saying other people don't do it, but I try to do it consistently. Uh, people that I believe and trust. So um, we're going to try to get the patches on the go again. And if I can find someone here in Europe to make the Masa merch, uh, we're going to monetize Masa again. Scully monetizera? No. Um, what's this one? What are the chances of you moving to Ukraine for at least a few years? There'll be much work to do after victory. Um, no, uh, I mean, anything could happen. Uh, so I've spent cumulatively 20 months. I think right now, uh, when this is all said and done and all the things I need to accomplish here and clear, it will be six months away again. Um, I think after victory, um, there'll be no place for people like me. I'm quite outspoken. Um, you know, my trolls will say that I'm a bigot. Uh, I'm a, I'm a whatever. Um, I'm no Clint Eastwood, but I have my opinions and there will be no place for people like me. Uh, it'll simply be, there will be experts that will come in and show us how to live, you know, and, uh, I don't want to be part of that. Um, I will always have my friends in Ukraine. I would always like to return. Uh, I might like to do the EOD work like Harley, you know, that can only be done in the summer months, 
you know, uh, when the ground's frozen, that's a non-starter. You gotta wait till, till it's, the puddle's dry too. So, I mean, going to Ukraine to volunteer every summer like that, 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 that wouldn't be a bad life, would it? You know, but I'd, I'd like to have some kids at some point too. Um, Kenzin from Curitiba uh, in Brazil. I, I was in love with a girl from Curitiba. Uh, would I live in Ukraine in the future? No, same question. Uh, not full time. I have no intention of that. Uh, Maria from Finland. What's your biggest dream that you want to fulfill? Uh, so my biggest aspiration um, after my bankruptcy and realize, well, I'll always have money because I can always, I'm, I was always good at making money. Um, maybe I don't need to sh solely shoot for money. I wanted to be a boxing coach. I want to be an amateur boxing coach. I want to work with uh, kids. I tend to have a real talent with like, I don't know, 16 to 24 year olds. And uh, yeah, I just want to do that. I want to be part of, I want to be like a chapter in other people's successes. Um, that was, that. that's what I want to do. Everything else is cool. Fred from London wants to know what poor people with very little to no money can do to support Ukraine, both in its military efforts and also in rebuilding. Um, write to your member of parliament, write to the opposition member, because uh, the UK, we don't have an American policy like where Republicans oppose Ukraine just because it's the opposite of the Democrats. Uh, I think if the Republicans do come to power, they would support Ukraine. I would accuse Democrats of the same thing if the if the um, if the positions were reversed. Um, troll me away, but we're not quite like that in Britain. Uh, policies tend to interweave. Write to your member of Parliament, whether they're Tory or Labour, and I would write to the opposition um, and express your desires for continued support for Ukraine because you're a vote. You know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're Lord so and so, or if you're in the establishment, or if you're working class. You're still one vote. Uh, does Masa live with you while you're in Sweden? Yes, Masa lives with me, and I love it. Um, what does Tara from Alberta say? After Ukraine expels the invaders, are you going to turn your channel into a toilet review? Listen, I love toilets. Because there's a lot of people, you know, we eat different foods, we come from different cultures, but we all shit the same, you know. Some assholes think they don't have assholes. But uh, I always thought toilets were fascinating all over the world. Um, you know the old-fashioned box toilet with the chain as well, like Godfather 1, where Michael comes out and blasts a lot. So, um, yeah, anyway. Uh, RS, this is what I want to talk about. RS activism in social media. So RS is from Stockholm. YouTube versus Instagram. What's the pros and cons? What's the differences? So I have a YouTube channel. As you notice, I haven't uploaded much lately. It's very hard. Um, you know, like in Hearson or anywhere else, we have a lot of dead hours. I live on a floor, on a mattress. And, and, and you know, there's a lot of dead hours. Uh, thank God there is, or everybody would be dead. Um, now I struggle with it because there's, there's so much to work to do. I'm, I'm studying full time. I'm working full time for QM for Ukraine. And um, I'm trying to get my health back in order as well. So, and Masa cuts into the day. Uh, Instagram, I've been relying on that a bit more lately for the story format, uh, for posts. Um, YouTube is more effective for me, but it's, it's more time consuming. If you want to be directly involved uh, with the grassroots of the war effort or even the humanitarian effort, which I am not, you need to go to Instagram. You have to go there if you want to follow people like like Philip, uh, Eggy, if you want to follow Harley, if you want to follow Olya Zaitseva, Andre West, if you want to follow the day-to-day -day workings of, of Eddie, uh, uh, Ukraine Eddie, if you, you know, good people I know. Uh, different soldiers, different efforts, different things they're fundraising for, different things they've accomplished day to day. Uh, a lot of us don't communicate through Signal. We'll communicate through Instagram. Okay, so you can get you can get real information on there. Um, I've always been very successful on Instagram. Um, YouTube, I can convey a message, but it's a, it's 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 a full message with context. That's what I like about YouTube. Instagram, it's this is what it is. Okay. 
Brandon Bridget from Los Angeles. Have you thought about having someone else edit the on-scene video so that you can concentrate on the work you're doing? Uh, what about a video montage of the funniest moments? So what I thought, I like doing the uh, YouTube shorts and I've thought about uh, taking some of my more interesting Instagram stories and putting them together because I know some of you who are like my diehard supporters would appreciate some of those. Um, but as far as the videos go, like I've, I've bought 800 gigabytes of unedited stuff from Kherson and uh, some work I did in Luhansk uh, before I left Ukraine. I don't know when that stuff can go up. I'm still going to leave it a bit, some of the sensitive stuff. So there's not going to be a chronology anymore. Um, but uh, no, I couldn't hand that to anyone else. I've made a mistake twice on my social media. Uh, one time I had an official request to take something down uh, from Bakhmut uh, in November 2022. And then there was another time in the Abdivka area that I, that I made some mistakes uploading some stuff. Uh, I took it down, but it ultimately... Um, there was no direct consequences for it, for anybody involved, thank God. Uh, but it definitely cost me a friendship. And from there on, there was consequences for others. Um, you know, so I, I, have to, I have to be very thoughtful about what I put out. And um, I have um, SBU, uh, Ukrainian um, uh, Security Services, watches my social media. Anyone over 10,000 followers, you're automatically on the list. So does FSB. But I also have other people uh, in the volunteer community who scan my posts and it's, n it's not for my benefit or for the benefit of Ukraine. Um, what their motivations are, I don't know. Um, but um, yeah, I, I have to be very careful with that. And I, I couldn't just hand that to someone else because you wouldn't, you wouldn't have the context or the understanding, um, unfortunately. I, I'm never going to have a high growth channel. And I'm happy with that now. Ozzy T wants to know about the best bathroom ever uh, from Australia. So I would say the best one is uh, actually in Finland. Uh, recently, when I went to Germany to pick up the van from Angelica, um, they had the nature bathroom, the gender neutral one. It had the captain seat with the arms that go down. It had the music. It had the sprayer for your bum hole. Fantastic. That was a 10 out of 10. Um, Dean from North Georgia. Have you transitioned out of Ukraine at your own free will decision or were you in some manner asked to leave? Um, no, I was never asked to leave Ukraine. Um, I have problems with the immigration service in Sweden. I'm a resident here. I'm not a citizen. And I was under strong advice uh, to come back here, to come back here and to contribute and smile and pay my taxes. Uh, so very fortunately... Uh, QM for Ukraine, quartermaster for Ukraine, uh, now employs me and Tilda, and I would rank her as the most effective Swedish volunteer in Ukraine, and she always has been, despite not having a cock and a gun. Um, that's Tilda's story, but I've always been a strong advocate for her, and uh, I maintain my own platform, which has been very successful still, um, despite me not putting out so much content, the, the support has continued, and... Um, I also work for QM for Ukraine. I will be doing hospital presentations. I, I pack all the med kits. I order the equipment. Um, about $400,000, the equivalent of the other week. About 100000 has arrived. And uh, we're delivering directly to Tilda. And we're also giving supplies to other Swedish organizations who are bringing cars down who, well, to be quite frankly, they can't afford to fill it with quality goods themselves. Uh, but it's, it's, it's all working together, and I, I do like that. Um, I really do like that. The hospital presentations, I will try my best um, to explain uh, the logistical walls from clinical care to tactical care um, and how we don't have the resources to process certain things, but I can put them in touch with Ukrainian organizations because clinical medicine gets a lot more complicated. Like there's six different ty type sizes of urological catheters, one ways, two ways, three sizes. You know, we can't do that. But I, I can help them uh, so because Sweden has an amazingly good will towards Ukraine. Um, so, so that's the kind of work I'm doing uh, that you asked. Was I asked to leave Ukraine? No. Um, I was strongly advised to, but not by Ukraine. But uh, I'm addicted to results and we're getting some. 
Thomas from Sweden. Brandon, do you find time to deal with Swedish immigration paperwork because of all your work now based here from Stockholm? Um, case comes up in March. Okay. Uh, the paperwork process is quite easy. Um, it's, it's quite, quite easy. But, um, you know, I've just got to, um, I've just got to put one foot in front of the other. My days are very busy. Uh, they're about 10 to 12 hours. Um, and what those would consist of doing my work for QM for Ukraine, um, packing and sorting all the med supplies, uh, inventorying what goes in what truck to Ukraine and what are priorities to go where. Um, I also have probably about two hours a day on the phone with Ukrainians or other volunteers trying to sort things out. Um, yeah, it's, it's quite time consuming. You know, and, and that happens in the middle of the day. And that happens at night time. Uh, it will be okay. Um, it will be okay. Men uh, jag känner mig lite harm mot uh, mikrofonsverket för uh, jag är en engelskman. En engelskman som kan svenska. En engelskman som är en fucket medlam. Låt oss jag är feminist. Uh, Låt oss jag är vegan. Nej. Jag hade sådär mån, okej? Okay? Jag älskar Sverige, jag trivs här i Sverige, jag kan svenska, jag betalar skatt. Um, här i Sverige, Sverige måste hjälpa hela världen, men jag åkte direkt till um, problemet, uh, att hjälpa, okej? Okay? Um, faktiskt, jag är en posterboy, en vånare. Fuck you, mikrofonsverket. Jo, men jag måste spela spelen. Så, ja. All my Swedish followers, you know what I'm talking about. And my Swedish is so much degraded, I'm ashamed. Um, but I'm just trying my best every day. Every day. So that's that's basically it. Um, if you watch this far, uh, tomorrow I have to get on a plane uh, to Gatwick. I am doing my FREC 3. FREC 3 and FREC 4 make you a qualified EMT in the UK. Um, I'll do my FRAC 3 course. I've been studying now. 600 page pre-read. Um, a lot of it I understand. A lot of it is new to me. There's a lot I don't understand like uh, like ECGs, you know, like a QRST wave, a P wave. And um, I really hope I really hope it all comes together. There will be a tour uh, for two weeks afterwards. London, Edinburgh, Manchester, Liverpool, Cardiff, and back to London, culminating on the 24th. Uh, there's been five medics from the Ukrainian army, uh, well, four, including myself. Uh, the precondition was that they spoke English, and we will speak to public and public engagements, and we will also uh, speak to politicians. There's a rumor we can talk to um, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak and Foreign Minister David Cameron. Um, I cannot confirm the venues uh, for the public engagements yet. And that's perfectly normal for this sort of tour. As I've learned before when I was doing my North America one, a press agent help. Um, there's a few A-listers, quote unquote, that it's it's all kind of hinging around. And, and that will be confirmed sometime next week. But I really want to ask any of the followers, um, you know, like I think of people like Gary Filmer, I think he's in Wales. Amen, hiding in the whirl. You know, I'm going to be in Liverpool with the other medics. I, I, I expect you to be there. Um, you know, there's a lot of people here right in the comments, like a woman from Essex. Um, if you if I can get those dates out in a community post, um, the other Ukraine YouTubers have all agreed to repost it. Um, when I can get those confirmed dates, I would appreciate if you could come uh, to London, to Liverpool, to Manchester, um, to Edinburgh, to Cardiff to london on the 24th um you can meet ukrainian medics you can talk to them uh you can show them your love you can show the politicians observing from afar that you do care i will get those dates to you as soon as possible um i just want to thank everybody uh it's been very hard for me to i have not edited any content um i'm not going to say i'm struggling but this is a very new transition to me you know, when people say, oh, it looks so good that you're resting at home. It's like props off to Harley. You know, half his time is in the UK, not in not in not in Ukraine. And uh, his donations go down when he goes home. 
Like I, I always shout Harley because he makes my life easier. He brings things. I trust him, you know, like he, he just delivered right now about $25,000 worth of gear for me, all to where it belonged, you know. But when he's back in Ukraine, his life's easier because he just got his job. But there's so much wheeling and dealing and things like, like when I go to Kiev, that's stress. You know, going out for dinner with Johnny, that's a relief because we ain't talking about the war. We're just being two guys. But it's, it never ends. It never, never, ever, ever ends. And I'm grateful for that. But uh, I'm, I must admit, I, I, I am getting better with it here. You know, like it's, it's, it was hard for a couple of weeks. Uh, there was a few clashes, maybe my own ego or impatience with my boss. Uh, but if he can raise 10 million euros last year for Ukraine, um, you know, rich people have rich friends. I want to learn. I want to learn what they're seeing. And I, I, I'll ask, offer my opinion when it's asked for. And they trust me, you know. So that was that was somebody very sympathetic to my problems here that, that found an opportunity to help themselves and help me. So, um, yeah, things are okay here. One second, because I know why you're here. Masa, come. Come. Come to Papa. Come to Papa. I know how to get her up here. Come. Your ball. Come. She, she's being in the mood today. Come. Oh, I'm going to do it. Oh. Anyway, that was my question and answer video 50 minutes in. Moss is okay. Um, you know, like some of my biggest joy here. Um, I had to clip all her bum hair, all her legs, all her will nots, all her matted hair there. And she just stays still for me. Let's go have a kiss. Let's go have a go kiss. Yeah, we got to go for a piss. <laughs>